Good morning and welcome to worship on this Holy Trinity Sunday. And happy uh, Memorial Day weekend to everyone. Um, we remember uh, in prayer all those who are remembering ones who were um, lost in times of serving their country in times of war. And we give thanks for um, the peace that we enjoy um, and for the bravery and self-sacrifice of those men and women. Good news, um, we are going to return to our building on Sunday, June 20th. Um, the council voted that that was the day with um, the projection of the completion of things in the building that we would be able to return to worship. So we're making final um, decisions on the details of that plan and please watch your email and your regular um, US mail uh, for those details to be shared and um, explained for everyone on how we will be returning together in worship to the building. Uh, the Sunday prior to that, June 13th, we will be meeting in Cherry Hill Park. We will have worship and celebrate the affirmation of baptism or confirmation of uh, nine of our ninth graders. And so um, we invite you to please come and worship in the park and celebrate uh, there with them and their families. Christ in Our Home, uh, the newest edition of that devotional, uh, the one that will be available for July through September is already here. So um, if that is the one that you use and you want to stop by and pick that up, those are available. And we also have several copies of that in large print. I invite you then to please join me in centering our hearts for worship. We take a deep breath and we breathe in the Holy Spirit who has gathered us here. And we breathe out those cares and worries of the week. And we open our hearts to worship uh, our God. And we begin this week with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us forget, <coughs> confess our sins. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. We join together in praying the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Almighty creator and ever living God, we worship your glory, eternal three in one, and we praise your power, majestic one in three. Keep us steadfast in this faith, defend us in all adversity, and bring us at last into your presence, where you live in endless joy and love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. First lesson is from Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him. Each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The second lesson is from Romans chapter 8, verses 12 through 17. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to John, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to, to you, Lord. O Lord. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. 
Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to Jesus, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know, and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that God gave God's only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Ask any pastor the week that they would like to invite a guest preacher to lead worship, and I am willing to bet that more than a few would answer Holy Trinity Sunday. And I admit I would perhaps fall into that category, that is, until I decided, well, it wasn't a Sunday that was really that different from any other Sunday. I mean, isn't it every Sunday that we offer our worship and praise to our one God in three persons, the Blessed and Holy Trinity? Now, we begin with the greeting, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And many of our prayers conclude with the words, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And we receive forgiveness of sins and we baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. We declare in unison the words of the Apostles' Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty. We believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And finally, the blessing that sends us on our way is sealed by the sign of the cross and the words in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is a mystery of our faith that God chooses to reveal God's self to us with the seemingly mixed up math problem of three in one and one in three. So what is different about this Sunday then? Well, just maybe that a long time ago, someone in our Christian tradition thought it would be a good idea to be more intentional in celebrating the wonderful mystery of our triune God. God who created heaven and earth, God who came to us as the word made flesh, and God the Holy Spirit giving us faith and uniting us together. And during the rest of the year, we rely upon and trust in the mystery of all the different means by which God comes to us and reveals God's self to us. But in this worship and celebration, once a year, comes the temptation to try to explain what the Holy Trinity is. And this is why preachers can find themselves dreading this particular Sunday on our liturgical calendar. Various faithful efforts in theology which attempt to explain the unexplainable can be helpful to a point. I mean, after all, we need a way to talk about and share with one another these things that are of deepest meaning in our lives. And so we use metaphors to compare that which we know with something that we struggle to know. And that isn't unique at all of an approach. I mean, really, the Gospels are full of the parables that Jesus used to describe the kingdom of God. 
Now, the only, the only trouble is the lure of having what appears to be a neat and tidy explanation can eventually fool us into thinking we have a handle on God. And eventually, that metaphor only stretches so far to wrap around the mystery of who God is before it starts to tear and unravel. So what if today, instead of trying to dissect the Holy Trinity into three separate but equal pieces or to wrap it and tie it with a neat little bow, well, we just simply worship and celebrate our beautifully complex, triune, whole and mysterious God. So we have scripture as our guide. And we must admit that in the majesty of Isaiah's vision, <clears throat> Paul's letter to the church in Rome, and in the conversation between Nicodemus and Jesus, we find today no clear and easy definition of the Holy Trinity. And in fact, we could search the entire depth and riches of our scriptures and not once find the words Holy Trinity. Now, the mystery of God, the relationship of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the fullness of all that God is, that is what we find in our scripture. It is the Holy Trinity, but it's not by that name. Isaiah points us to the mystery of the Holy Trinity. And that vision of the throne room of God is so awesome. It's so majestic. I think of it, the hem of God's robe taking up the entire room. It's beyond our grasp. Our comprehension of God as fully and completely at the same time, always, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, well, that too is beyond our grasp. But still, in this holy, mysterious, awe-inspiring vision from the prophet, we can glimpse it all. It's sort of like one of those paintings that up close is just a bunch of dots, but then when you step back and take in the whole thing, it's a beautiful landscape. Somewhere in the midst of the hem of that giant robe and the flutter of the seraph wings and the hazy wisps of smoke, we step back and we can see the fullness of God, the Holy Trinity. The first and most immediate impression is the majesty and the mystery, but soon that gives way to an embrace of grace and mercy. Isaiah crying out, confessing his sin and the sins of his people, even with the thundering sounds of the seraphim worshiping the Lord, Isaiah's cry is still heard. Isaiah cried out in his unbearable, undeniable unworthiness, and standing before the throne of God, he could do nothing else. But his cry was answered with grace. It's as if the mighty God whose robe hem fills the entire room still somehow bends and stoops to meet Isaiah, to lend him an ear, to touch him and set him free. And then he's transformed. Isaiah is from one shrinking in shame to one who is empowered and sent. His guilt departs, his sin is blotted out. Isaiah dares to say, here I am, send me. The sum of the parts is infinitely greater than the whole. We see a big, big God who is at the same time near to us, close to us, reaching for us, claiming us, redeeming us, and sending us. Take another step back. Squint a little. Don't try too hard to figure it out. Catch it from the corner of your eye. And what do you see? Not a flaming coal, but perhaps splashing water. Baptism, washed clean, forgiven and sent in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. To look closely at the Trinity is really to just step back to see the bigger picture of the fullness of God, 
to witness but not try to explain the mysterious threefold relationship. And in baptism, we're brought into the mystery, into the relationship of the Trinity. And in Romans, Paul writes about our adoption into that relationship. It's a relationship completely of God's making. It's holy and mysterious. It's beyond our grasp. And at the same time, it's intimate and very near to us. Paul spells out the names nicely for us. Father, Christ, the Spirit. But they are never separate. One in three and three in one. The fullness of God creating and sustaining the relationship between God and God's children. The triune God is ever present with us, leading us, setting us free, giving us life. God adopts us and inspires our cries of Abba, Father. God in Christ is our adopted brother, our fellow heir to, the, to all that it means to be children of God. Step back and squint. Don't be tempted to untangle where the relationship begins or how it is established. Is it by the Spirit? Is it from the Father, Abba? Is it in Christ? Yes, yes, and yes again. And as the dots converge to create the landscape, the image forming is, wait for it, a picture again of baptism. Children of God. Adoption, debtors set free from slavery, our former selves put to death, new life. Finally, under the cover of darkness, Nicodemus comes to talk to Jesus. Nicodemus is a Pharisee. He has been both a student and a teacher of the scripture. He's a man of faith in the one true God of Israel. He recognizes Jesus could not do the things he does apart from the presence of God. And Nicodemus wants to know more. But on this night, Jesus' answers are less than clear. They seem to only add to the mystery. Every answer leads to another question. Nicodemus is focusing on those dots. But Jesus is trying to help him stand back see the whole picture. Jesus uses the metaphor of the wind. The wind is like the mystery of God. We can't nail down the wind. We know the wind by experiencing it, hearing the sound of it. Jesus even seems to tease Nicodemus just a little bit. I mean, here he is, this great teacher, and yet he doesn't understand what Jesus is telling him. It's tongue-in-cheek. What Nicodemus thinks he knows won't help him understand. This being born a second time, this being born of the water and the spirit, God sending the Son not to condemn the world, but to save it. These things are not a matter of understanding. These things that Nicodemus seeks to learn from Jesus are a matter of faith. Don't look too close or it loses its shape. Step back again. Look once more. Just as mysterious as our triune God is the faith we receive from God. The triune God loves. The triune God wants to be in relationship with the world. God the Father sends. God the Son. God the Son saves. And God the Holy Spirit helps us to believe. The Holy Trinity is there again. Its light flickers in the shadows of the evening of that story. Born a second time, born of water and the spirit, born from above, you won't have to squint too hard this time. Yes, it's baptism. The word and water mysteriously and forever bind us to God and all the fullness of God's love and grace. One bowl of water, three splashes child of God is born anew. For God so loved the world that God gave God's only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We understand why it sounds ridiculous and yet we believe it. Up close 
It's a bunch of dots. I take a few steps back and it is the most beautiful painting you have ever seen. The Holy Trinity is not a math problem to be solved. It is a mystery to live in. It's a relationship. It's the fullness of God that is promised to us in baptism. The Holy Trinity. Our triune God is ever present, inviting us to step back from the painting and see the whole picture. Inviting us into relationship with the fullness of all that God gives to God's children. As children of God, we gaze in awe. We wonder in the mystery. We fall to our knees in worship. We speak our doubts. We ask questions. We stand in grace. And we live in relationship. And then we say, here I am. Send me. And all these things, everything we do, we do in the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I invite you now to join together with the whole church. And we do that to confess our faith, the faith we celebrate today in the triune God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. We pray, Holy, Holy, Holy One, for the faith to trust in the mystery of how you are at work in the world, bringing new life and new beginnings. Open us to the experience of your powerful love and merciful grace. Set us free from having to know all the answers and be with us as we struggle in times of doubt. Create us anew, save us from our sin, and inspire us in faith and truth. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks for your power revealed to us in creation, for cedars and oaks, for rushing waters, for the echoes of thunder. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the nations and our leaders that led by your spirit, they work towards a world where all of your children enjoy peace. We pray especially for peace between Palestine and Israel. We pray for a spirit of cooperation among our leaders in Congress. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for healing for all those who suffer, especially victims and survivors of trauma or violence. Give respite to those living with PTSD or other mental health concerns. Lord, we pray for all of those who are recovering from surgery, for all those who continue to recover from COVID-19, and for all those who mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this worshiping community, that the splendor of your majesty, the holiness of your mystery, may be glorified through our worship and our relationships with one another. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. And we give thanks, O oh God, for those who have died in the faith. And we remember all those whose lives have been lost due to the horrors of war. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Continue to give thanks to God for all of the gifts and blessings that we receive in our life. 
and we return them back to the Lord in order to continue to tell the story of our trying God, of the mercy and love and grace that God envisions for the world. So thank you for your offerings that support the ministry we do together to tell that story. Please join me in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. God.